What's the one thing that could stop the growth in the housing market right now? Hi, I'm Nick with the ANED Realty Group. Just wanted to give you a quick San Diego housing update for September. But of course, at first, I want to just give you a little bit of context of what we have going on. Uh, we have definitely been seeing a V-shaped recovery in the real estate market. And uh, a lot of economists are actually saying that the real estate sector is actually helping to lead the overall economic recovery. When we look at the four major components, right, demand, supply, price, and time on the market, we have now exceeded the baseline uh, for what was going on before the pandemic. So that's definitely good news, right? Year over year changes were up on almost every single metric that we look at, showings, purchase applications, pending deals, existing sales. The only thing we're down on is the inventory, right? And we've been talking about that, especially here in San Diego for quite some time. Uh, looking at consumer spending though, that is starting to return. That's definitely good news. Uh, definitely here's a little you know nationwide chart to see what's going on. I did have a lot of, of uh, comments last time I did this video about you know what about what about unemployment though unemployment when that shoe drops look I get that I think I told you guys in the very beginning of this you, you know uh, a lot of the segments of the unemployment uh, were hit were, were people that were not necessarily in the housing market but as of September we've basically been seeing a steady decline in the unemployment rate uh, since April which is definitely good news right I thought this was very interesting too when you look at the number of months we've had unemployment greater than nine percent here in 2020 during the pandemic we've only had four months right a lot of people consider you know want to compare this to the Great Depression Great Recession all this other stuff it's just not really the case uh, like I've been saying for months we, we do have a health crisis we don't have an economic crisis also I had uh, some comments on previous video uh, about the number of you know foreclosures that are coming well look just looking at the number of forbearances, they've definitely been decreasing. Um, you know, since around May, we're, we're down about 25% of them. A significant portion of forbearances never even took effect. People got the forbearance as a, as a um, you know, kind of a, a prophylactic measure, and then they wound up never actually using it, which is, again, good news. So uh, keep in mind, by the way, I said this in the last video, our, our foreclosure rate's about 50% of where it's at. Are we gonna see more foreclosures due to this pandemic? Yeah, probably, sure, of course. Foreclosures are part of the real estate market. We're always going to have foreclosures. But even if they doubled, as some people are talking about, that would just get us back to the to our regular historic average. So uh, I think when it, we're looking at the market, we still need to consider these three things, right? Inventory, equity, and what the experts are saying. Our inventory right now is incredibly low. Nationwide, we're only at three months of inventory. That's never occurred. In, in the history of the United States. Here in San Diego, uh, last month we were at 1.3 months worth of inventory, right? So not even on the scale. So still very much a seller's market, right? Again, equity, I, I've been talking about this for quite some time now, right? 42% of all homes in the United States are owned free and clear, right? And, and really 93% of all homes in the United States have at least 10% equity. This is completely different than what we saw in, in the housing crash in 2008. In other words, there's plenty of people here that have equity in their homes and they're not just going to walk away from them like they did in 2008 when the going gets tough, right? I thought this was pretty interesting. Year over year home equity uh, gains. You know, if you look throughout the entire country, obviously prices have been going up everywhere, which is, which is good news for sellers, right? Uh, when we look at the projections, what the experts are saying, right? Everybody is calling for uh, for increased appreciation over the course of the next 12 months with, with the uh, with the outlier there of house. Uh, I don't know where they're at and they may revise that, but we'll have to see. But but obviously a lot of smart people think that we're going to see housing continually uh, increasing the strength of the market into next year. OK, keep in mind, again, I have a lot of people coming back. Oh, you know, the crash, the crash, it's going to be a crash. Look, our lending standards are completely different over the past 10 years since the crash. Who we're actually giving mortgages to before the crash, we gave anybody a mortgage with a, you know, a social security number and a pulse, got a mortgage. These days, that's, that's not the case. We've been very selective over the past 10 years to make sure that people can actually pay for these things. And that's why we've seen uh, you know, so much equity in these homes as well. So again, the one obstacle really is going to be the inventory. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I thought this was interesting, nearly 400,000 fewer homes have been listed compared to last year, right? That's huge. That's a huge gaping hole uh, in, in our inventory. And we're seeing that here in San Diego as well, right? When you look at the seller traffic, there's a lot of gray in this, in this chart. So uh, this is basically the only thing that could really stall us out. And we're just, we're just not building enough new homes right now 
to keep up with the, uh, the demand. So looking at our, our San Diego market update here uh, for last month, remember these are median numbers all over the county, all price points, all housing types. Sales price was up 7%. Our days on market was down 15%. That means things are actually selling quicker year over year, right? Even though it's 28 days. So we're seeing things take a little bit longer from September uh, versus, you know, uh, in the summertime, but still our month's worth of inventory is only 1.3 months worth of inventory. Remember, we need six months of inventory for a healthy market. Our active listings uh, were down, but our pending listings are up. Remember, above the line are the lagging indicators. Uh, these active pending and sold listings are our leading indicators telling us where the market is going. And what we're seeing is fewer homes coming on the market and the ones that are coming on the market are, are being snatched up quicker, okay? But I decided to throw this in uh, here this, this, this time around just because I thought this was incredibly interesting. We typically use the $2 million price point as kind of a, a, a delimitator here in San Diego, right? And, and what we think of as, as high end. And typically when things start to slow down, it's the high end market that gets hit first and then we see that trickle down into the lower price points. However, the price range uh, in September with the strongest pending sales was the two to $5 million price range, right? Which is crazy, it was up 29%. And I thought this was also significant too. Home sizes with the strongest pending sales were four to 6,000 square foot homes. They were up 24%. So again, I think that could possibly be COVID driven, right? More people are spending more time in their home. Uh, they need you know, places to work from home. Uh, they want more activity space in their home. Uh, so I, I think that you know, we're starting to see that play out in some of these numbers. So anyway, that's about it there real quick. Remember, if you have any questions about what's going on in your neighborhood, what your home is worth, uh, where you think your neighborhood is headed over the next you know, few months or so, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Just reach out and uh, that's about it. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, who you choose to negotiate for you absolutely matters.